an exponent of green architecture it was for him a praxe of much more that india is endowed with a rich repertoire of traditional construction and design practices that do not guzzle on energy his projects are an extension of heritage and contemporary traditional practices to make them timeless those modern and futuristic this is best, best exemplified by among other harvesting 17.5 million liters of rainwater in a water strapped region of india's arid zone it is a low carbon footprint near negligible energy which has won five stars griha rating and lead platinum a design of a 20th century elevator congruously fitting into a 15th century fort that has received a citation from unesco india water positive by contemporizing the traditional water heritage through its regeneration replication and mainstreaming he feels that projects of such nature even if compli- uh, completed architecturally do not serve their full purpose if he therefore frequently engages in on stage and off stage discourses interacting with students and delivering to the Bartlett School of Architecture Kingston University and Ravensbourne in the US in March 2019 he in October 2019 he delivered talks at the new at the new school Parsons and CCNY Spitzer School of Art UCLA Mr Mridul was designated a leader of sustainability for the executive master of naturees for awards and thesis and boards of public and private institutions He is currently officiating as he has co-founded the Jodhpur Lore an initiative to prestigious awards in India Istanbul and Vienna his projects and articles have been published in leading national ad, uh, audience and i would request you to begin with your presentation Good evening, everybody. Uh, Dr. Kashyap, I hope our splendid host, Arthi Mem, friend, I must warn you, almost an hour and half long lecture. I hope. Uh, when I um, heard, he wasn't aware that it is so good. When I visited and I went to various, and believe me, that I visited so many. schools of architecture all over the world it will suffice to say you know i mean i can go on talking about bnc i'm very impressed it is a great honor to be speaking in the memory of padma shri architect ap kanwinde when we were students he had already been practicing for close to 3 and a half years i i experienced through publications or case studies i visited i am amdabad there was one of his most famed building pill in times when modern architecture was being fashioned as anything but simple it was a breath means or something that got into the subliminal and somehow continue to guide guide even today mr shin my deepest homage to him and my deepest gratitude not only for before i start speaking about naivety got me into learning straight from the site i had not worked from where i passed out never lent any dogmatic learning so i was not cast in any certain and then suddenly a residence residential project f- fell in my lap since i about design tools of the desert regions and materials jodhpur was a place instruction was hardly taught in our college so when i started my practice my learning of stone and mortar about stone architecture from local masons mistries and craftsmen with time i discovered that literally and figuratively they used stone masonry in too modular a manner I strongly felt that a lot of novel experiment by like experimentation can be achieved. This is a picture of the wall city of Jodhpur from atop its face. There is a huge repository of best construction practices in our own strategies by negotiating the five elements the panchatva and our natural resources were charted long time back by our for own soil. I remember in my childhood when I would enter the old wall city I would feel a marked difference in temperature Its and cities were designed using passive strategies to achieve comfort conditions. Even in the there were basements. 
I don't you know I started picking up but what I found invariably was that these were very very cool spaces no another important thing I observed was about fenestration since the sun was very bright and scorching faded light reflected sunlight taking away heat and at the same time enhancing the velocity of air it would end sun air space water and earth how we handle and transform these five elements to make them conducive to our habitat is what about the courtyards the optimum sized ones not large ones neither too small especially in the desert vary vastly from day to night it becomes very cool in the night and i learned practically first hand how cool air of the night sizing in terms of plan and height they provide sun free lighting natural reflected sun my first few houses i will present one of my initial residential projects where i did some very long electricity cuts and because of these cuts i had to find ways of providing optimum natural lighting and ventilation and in the middle of the site You can see this is a 50 year old tree that was there and it took away a good 15 feet but we decided that we are going to retain this tree so we retained this tree and then we had a footprint of about 40 as an earth sheltered building and for primary source of lighting and ventilation i reintroduced the entire light and ventilation was an introverted you know this is the courtyard that we have placed here the all light rather than without introverted kind of a planning it was and the new thing that i did was provide habitable room in the basement so that these could remain cool naturally without the aid of mechanical and erratic electricity dependent over here the courtyard was sunk into the basement to further facilitate cool ventilation and this also story house because of the sunk courtyard there were full length windows and not the small vents like i also designed external cavity walls to check heat ingress created cavity walls you can see the section in the plan over here roofs house with the final finishing with lime lime terracing this was the coolest uh, you know the coolest kind of roof i've ever built like in the traditional houses the external facade uh, fenestration was kept to the minimum and since an intricate jali would cost dosed by the this is almost together over there comprising of a, so there were friends would sit here and friends could be taken and a small kitchen that just in case you the master kitchen and then we introduced seven courtyards you can see the mark and do with the roof. so there was a ramp taking them down and in between that the, the house and i'll show you some of the pictures apartments so total 12 bedrooms in the basement with toilets so total 12 bedrooms in the basement six in the top so total they are opening they are lighting up the main showed you earlier how the courtyards worked in the night time the because of the diurnal visual lighting from dawn to dusk even in the basement so i wanted to i was so much in love with stone so i really wanted to write the odyssey of stone over here quarry stone in the quarries you know very rough large pieces of stone then we start breaking them breaking them up into say 15 and then you know from rock this is raw then the finishing is rock facing then it becomes you know one hand chisel then two hand chisel so how the stone is acquired in the quarry in what form and how man has that i have ever used stone is a material which you know even after 100 years if you take off you'll be museum we have done in jalgaon in maharashtra itself and this i think was completed in the year 2012 now jain irrigation system and so this is in the campus of jain hills and uh, uh, green he was sure about one thing he wanted material that would you know stand for centuries so what he wanted is that we must use uh, what we did was we chose jodhpur sandstone and all, all these are planted trees over here and this was the only clearing that we got and there were deep in the footprint of the building over here and we were sure that we are not we wanted to take care of the contours also we did not want to do too much cutting and filling museum block that we were doing there would be at least three stories here because we built and we that side where is it here yeah. the land falls down this way and then further down and we started building on a, um, the contours we just built a tree over there so we built around that tree and we kind of contour that we had so there was some bit of filling over here but we created so much filling this contour line is the section is cutting in one part because we wanted to 
and come out from here so i don't have that picture but it offers a beautiful picture when you look at it that against this strict we are going to have this is almost 24 25 feet high um pillar how we are going to put the lime this is all lime it's called muram lime where the puzzle line is already from rajasthan to construct over here because people over here were not used to making uh, doing masonry in lime lime pergola a floating pergola on a lotus pond once you come in from here then you have this the roof that you see the slopes that we have taken we went and studied the buildings where gandhi ji uh, this kind of a, the, these kind of slope the idea was to and we use a lot of um, um, you know permeable surfaces so that was here we just built a chopal around it and just outside one porch we maintained the street we did not cut it it's not uh, air conditioned at all only this block is gently air conditioned and you know, we got those ratings for it another very interesting project that we did was uh, a pilgrimage come cultural uh, statue of uh, lord shiv and they built it out of rcc i i i mean how they are going to finish it because rcc had its own problems and the climatic conditions started looking for somebody who could give them uh, some consultation about traditional practices and that's when they came to me and i suggested that we do art in palaces and forts and all old ones so trust me i had no knowledge i mean i knew about rh plaster i knew how it is done in pakistan which was as well india we study things which was done in chennai and you know in many places and this is what is governing so there are a lot of kitchen uh, recipes which go into it which i'll very gently very briefly i'll muram lime muram lime is the puzzle line is pre mixed into this so we got this lime all the way from rajasthan to do it and we got 50 people and we trained those 50 people in how to do arash plaster it has very interesting stories this is is what it is and this is sin so these four things curing lime from inside and this is the reinforcement that they use for lime mortar what we were doing this was for the undercoat you know this would this would vary from 3/4 inch to 1 inch 1 inch depending on you know this is what makes the whole thing very very expensive in rome the mandate was that you have to mature uh, dahi into it curd into it uh, every week every 5 7 days and the like you cannot use it so we waited for that to happen and then we did the final coat and this final coat was of course what kind of thing the interesting thing about this is um uh, that while this work was being done we were just nearing finish uh, ye jo upar se ganga ki dhara hai ye chali gayi thi there were a lot of things which were happening all that was happening in rcc so what they have actually created is char dham banaye wahan par all these are rcc works which are done by hutko is a foot over there at that time now of course we can do it much cheaper another we have done in our city jodhpur so basically it is a museum for uh, broom is that when we started doing this this is mr komal kothari he is an anthropologist a world renowned anthropologist kaam mein lete hue chote chote lakdiyan kaam mein lete hue wahan ki aur museums they are so large they so अब अगर मेरी बिल्डिंग इतनी विशाल हो जाएगी तो बिल्डिंग इट विल बिकम अ म्यूजियम पीस एंड दीज वुड ड्वाफ इन फ्रंट ऑफ अग्री दैट वील डू इट इन मड सो ऑफ कोर्स आई हैड नॉट वर्क इन मड अर्लियर देन दैट भाई साइड पे ब्रिक्स बनाई उनको वहां जला के भी देखा एंड दिस इज वॉट दिस इज द फर्स्ट मोमेंट ऑफ स्पेसिस दैट वी क्रिएटेड जिसके अंदर बाहर जो गांवों के अंदर बाहर जो चीजें जलती हैं या बाहर जो रखी जाती हैं दोस्त को This is, of course, a water body at the site, which we are now developing into a, an amphitheater. And there's nice exhibition spaces that we have created. वहाँ पर आपको कम से कम there was display of these jhadoos over there It's for the evening. But in the daytime, they don't require any artificial light. The next and the last project I will now having been having been built to my reckoning. But it is a project, the project which is very close to my heart. It's a project that is spread on a sink. We pull them out. from the dormancy and we are joining them to the mainstream it's the old buildings also together with it that we are doing so where the ancient and the new are woven into historical geographical socio cultural context are intrinsic to the tradition because of the socio cultural contextualization in the uncertainties of nature these rainwater containments were created always with a to up to optimally serve the flora the fauna and the people today we talk a lot about people's right to water without a thought it aqua structures built as ecosystems to access subterranean water or to harvest rain water were in it to water man brought the 
best of his skills as offering in worship. Water bodies became the most important feature of the desert settlement and gravel body. So a simple village pond gets mutated into a simple architect social interaction and festivities. A plain thin shaft in the middle of the pond and serves to estimate the water depth and indicate the number of months in water uh, the water would last. A simple paralyzing containments were seen as sacred from large to small. Even today, when you're using the parinda or going and, uh, you know, filling it up or doing continuous wisdom in water management kept the country by and large water sufficient. Water, India wasn't so from off-site locations or remotely located rivers and dams instead of complementing and completely we now have a situation where we have sufficient precipitation so uh, yet both are right from their perspective standpoints the rainfall map shows that support the needs of an increasing population yet this doesn't quite add up why is it that a country which has a had a rich heritage of water is thirsting for water anand i don't know how many of you have seen this film but very interesting character in that tell stories of contradiction and mundane matters of life and pain and troubles of life. So what he says is on this water in our country in our river and streams we bathe in them once to hold water So the water maps is ill managed. It really is a man-made crisis. To understand the causes in past, as a case in point that can be expanded to apply for major part of India close to this population of entire Australia so this is the 40 degrees 50 degrees temperature rainfall is erratic 450 such are the extremities of climate and the historic city of Jodhpur published now zooming in on this outcrop you see so you can see this is this is the seat of the the ridge was at the edge of the craggy uh, craggy uh, craggy mountain so they placed their fort over here so that enemies but you know this also gave them a very very commanding position from collection of water from the perspective hilly area water would flow uh, rain water because all water that is there in Jodhpur and for that matter in Rajasthan is rain water so water which would flow you transfer this water to the city and you see this small uh, terrain you collect water and then pass it on to the city and the city you know uh, Shri Radhi now this is a uh, river which is Desert. This up ko apne nourish kar diya. But jo pani jo bach jata hai from the rooftops, uh, wells over there, farming over there, and finally it goes in, uh, empties itself in a marsh. Of the ridge where rainwater was harvested, you can see rainwater being harvested here, over here, the mountains. And this is the water body near the fort, so from natural uh, waters can be accessed from here. Then this is a man made water body inside the main well. This is a tanka, so from rooftop you collect water from these, would be transferred into the basket of water bodies that. Jodhpur has. I'll just quickly run through this. So this is a brackets here. Just per head laga hota tha. Persian wheel from the water would be pulled up from here. These were in the midst of the dense settlement. This picture shows how the fabric of a tightly padded with beautiful buildings and have a tree and a raised platform to sit and gather and to catch up, where women would come to fetch water. This is a picture of a jhalra, beautiful purposes. The step points were of square geometry, you know, uh, this is the, this particular step well is 55 feet by 55 feet with steps on three sides and leading into the depth of water. You also go down, you can keep it on the... If a draw well is a step well, Bavadi in the local dialect, in Gujarat you would call it Vav, I don't know what you call it here, but you know, you go. that one was square, these are narrow and they move only in one direction. The depth goes only in the one direction. Column and beam structure with beautiful narrow pavilions adorned by exquisite arches and pillars. So, you well in their domain. The architecture of the step wells was such that the underground pavilions and chambers in the flanking walls were designed to be used by women outing they had amid daily chores and domestic responsibilities. Though these are pictures of a and plan and rooftops of flanking houses converts the lanes into temporary canals that flow in the rain what flow in after filling all the containments all kind of water bodies the surplus water of the town goes into this river and then this river goes into villages so through a hierarchy of strategically planned water bodies 
Unfortunately, with the afflictions of changing times, trials in urban areas and water-intensive crops instead of region-appropriate farming escalated demand for water. The huge number of a centralized state in meeting the fresh water demand. When India was to be dem democratically governed, water supply altered the concept of consumption and conservation of water, especially because instead of having to fetch water, this water from being a free resource became a commodity. From being managed by community, it has been the ancient water bodies from the communities without accountability. Having been abandoned and forced into dormancy, three C's responsible for the decline of such beautiful heritage. The three C's are complacence, complicity, careless by rem remaining indifferent to people using the seasonal drains as sewers and dump yards in the catchment area. The three C's turned what were once temples to water into tombs of water and in seeking and is seeking solution from off-site remotely located source presently from a river in Punjab. About two-thirds of rainfall in Jodhpur as in the rest of India is allowed to fritter away and the total warning yet ironically hope inducing the on-site sources by harnessing the raced, ra wasted rainwater. I would like to revisit a slide at the beginning of between innumerable blue dots in this right from south to north continuously expanded. These amped Clearly, the water stress can be mitigated if we channelize what the first two maps indicate. Phenomenal amount of rainwater can be considering that we consider ourselves far more advanced. It is an old idea whose time has come again. India needs to apply itself to transform spreading across time and space, history and the present, collapsed as one to become contemporary and possibly urban and rural fabric and also in the future development. And once these local on-site water bodies are active, last one decade we have started putting into practice the idea of contemporizing the traditional water architecture by way of the regeneration iteration. For regeneration of water heritage, we have identified a huge number of ancient water bodies and are seeking one is among the first few ones that has been regenerated. The picture on the left shows in July last year. The idea is to join these to the present network and supply their water to the neighborhood. Sustainability and upkeep. Another regenerated step pond being used with them in the current times. Another important component of the water heritage and network of the city, where it's rainwater, there's sewer over here. And when it starts raining, these flood and they spread into houses and clean and make them part of the city landscape. Depending upon their extent and volume, much needed in the city. And during rains, these could serve as drains, as blue corridors of the city, facilitating and realizing the idea of iteration is to innovatively replicate ancient water bodies by creation of patients. The ancient Bavari has been successfully iterated in a link between the ancient and the contemporary to reassure the golden era of water harvesting structures. In the century palace Umed Bhavan for developing a township stretch of about two kilometers in length with a very hostile land morphology realized and was being tra transferred on actual site, a lot of challenges had to be dealt with. So the question was how to create a conducive microenvironment for a good township to flourish on a site on a red sandstone hill, not a single tree, very low water, a dense green cover and ensures continuous supply of water for sustenance, water for developing a thick verdure for the township, at least from the state. <coughs> the only such, and this is the, how the idea of creating a new rainwater harvesting building germinated, or where they, had, they would have large parks, landscape parks over here and along uh, flanking these would be the this is the low, lowermost portion and this is where we selected and we decided to put our water body water by displacing minimum excavated space by constructing a retaining structure now you see what I do the conventional retaining walls in stone they were taking about seven feet on each side so they would leave very little for water such quantity over here so you know then how do we do this so the idea that occurred to us is we just inverted the um, vaults and made them standing vaults. So these are appended vaults and the pillar are pushing from here and being taken care of over here. So this we translated into building. This you can see how these... Uh, what is interesting about this is that we have uh, displaced minimum excavated space for th but that is the thickness of these walls. A composite structure for the subterranean liters of water is about 750 feet long. An average of 30 feet was tapering. The last bay, the deepest one, is in form of a cylinder, a well, that kind of, and a network of stormwater, stormwater drains converge on either side. 
over here and over here so rain water enters from step well or for that matter any other building has this kind of masonry structural system to my reckoning is site sourced stone so you see these were the hillocks over there we had to go at a price we used this material so there was minimum transportation which was involved we just picked it up from there in short distance the carbon emission was of negligible level the stone was hand the larger components like beams pillars slabs and coopings were also lifted and placed manually by the residue waste and scrap stone born of process in sizing and shaping stone was used as hartings pollution the large volume of excavated earth for creating this subterranean structure was utilized in reclaiming the undulation utilized the scrap generated in processing stone completely consumed in construction and the excavated earth used for reclamation a filth of locally available natural building material built by local craftsmen to collect the nat natural resource of rainwater a quick tour of the completed project this is the entrance to the bavri as contemporary as it is traditional the forecourt in form of a step pond occupies the foreground as an inviting community space for people to gather and celebrate restoring the socio cultural ethos of the intimate connect that the community had with the vernacular water buildings its magnificence starts revealing itself as one descends the two story pavilion marks the transition between the step pond and the step well As one gets closer, the tibiated frames form a concentric view through the post and beam, 50 feet away. Most of the stone used is rock-faced or rough-hewn, contrasting the rawness of stone with strict geometry. The descent into the earth offers varying experiences of light and shadow through varying frames of beams and columns. The columnar frames that enclose the volume at the end of the arcuated walls hold pavilions at two levels. There's one at this level and this. This is something we know you can cross from one side the other, and this is something where we would ultimately bring bring people. They can come and sit here, and water will when it is at the fullest will come up to this level. As you descend deeper, shadows deepen, outside noise muffles and echoes amplify. The elements have retained the naturalness in the geometry choreographed. Diverse shapes of sky is offered through each varying frame. while the tributed form the beam and uh, column silhouettes the sky in a rectangle the arcuated walls frame the sky in a parenthesis and the final circular bay frames a telescopic view of the sky kind of reaching out to it while simultaneously drawing the sun to light up its cavern true to the tradition the stepwell has been developed to serve as a public space also with a meandering promenade and park along it, its walls the before and after pictures bear testimony to the environmental ecological transformation such projects can effect from barren to lush green almost at the same site it is interventions like birka bavri to mitigate environmental degradation offer a paradigm shift from tapping the scarce groundwater and wasting the rainwater to harness both ancient and modern by adopting an inclusive approach in developing a sustainable water portfolio and make india water positive there is so much talk about making access to uh, of water to fundamental rights uh, as a fundamental right which i told you in the beginning but we have to take care of flora and fauna and we have to be inclusive like the concern and sensitivity our ancestors possessed and demonstrated in this traditional folk painting which depicts the ecosystem of the great indian desert an inclusive environment with water at its co core i close with the hope that the governments and communities of the world work in tandem to recreate such livable environments fit for a harmonious and balanced coexistence of flora fauna and mankind thank you questions if there are any i hope there are many
Well, I'm happy to answer. Well, I've never known, I've never designed anything without context. I know there's a lot of talk, there's a debate going on that why do buildings have to be contextual. But I think there's a heritage. Every country has a heritage. And, you know, things would change, things would modernize, like what you're doing, digital architecture also you're doing. But remember, you've started doing digital architecture even in mud. That's what I saw. Because you see, you can't take things away from the soil, from the soil of the land. And India is still a poor country. Why it has to be contextual in many ways is that even if you're making an air-conditioned building, you make sure that it is pre-cooled passively, then you're spending less energy on that. So from that point of view, also contextualization is necessary. And then India is a country of huge traditions. So they should continue to create heritage. If you don't, then you're suddenly cut off because, you know, I don't want to criticize any country. But when I go to Dubai, there's no downtown over there. They pull down all old buildings and they're making new buildings. I don't feel very comfortable. Well, uh, that's a question we, even we had in our minds, whether we'll be able to do them, whether we'll be able to establish the social connect. But fortunately, I showed you two pictures where people have started reusing, they're using it as a theater now. So, I mean, that social connect is there because with water, there is some, some spirit which is connecting you to water. So I don't think that has gone away. And in a way, it, you know, those pujas were basically rituals to keep the water clean and maintain those. But these water bodies are gone, but those rituals are still there. Now, these rituals, we can start reconnecting to water. So, we are very fortunate that, you know, those are very strong rituals that we have. Maintenance is not an issue. I mean, well, why do you think maintenance? I mean, why does this doubt come to your mind? Yeah. Ganga is a natural thing. Wo kitni gandi hai. To, wo to mindset ki baat hai. Aap kisko saaf rakhna chate ho. Ah. You know, I just, uh, if I, I have uh, observed the usual correctly, I find that at Gandhi Tirtha, the correct me if I am wrong. No, they don't have colonial look, they are rather straight, but the thing is that uh, uh, this was uh, a structural requirement and we did not want to use RCC, they are very, very straight. Uh, anyway, I, uh, another one little thing, I did not get it. At Jalgao, what kind of a stone did you use? Okay, well, now that's an interesting question and uh, the reason why I did not bring it up was because it was becoming a too big a talk, but I'm glad you brought it up. So, uh, my client was very sure that he wants to use uh, some material which is very, very sustainable, reinventable. Now, the stone which is available in Jalgao, it's, it's bond with lime mortar is not very good, number one. And secondly, they use it only for foundation purposes. It's more, it's very, very uh, slippery. So they could not use it. So we debated upon a lot of stones which we could get. It is true that this is a stone which we got from 900 kilometers from Jalgaon. And it does raise questions of sustainability. And you'll be surprised that we've still got the Greha 5 star and we've still got lead platinum. So this question was raised by Griha people, they are more stringent. They said that when you are getting stone from so far, how do you expect to get grades for this? Our argument was that they were ready to give us grades for anything which is done in uh, cement blocks. So my argument to them was that when you are making cement, you are getting lime from some place, you are getting pa packing material from another place, you are burning it at 1600 degrees centigrade, you are leaving off so much carbon dioxide and transportation involved in bringing raw material for both packing and for cement and then when you're making cement you're taking
and then bringing it to site. So I told them that compare that carbon footprint that you are generating to what we are doing. We are mining it at site. We are doing it manually. We don't have any packing material. This is coming all open. Only thing that we are doing is we are transporting for 900 kilometers, and the carbon footprint generate the uh, generated by this is far outweighed than what is generated by cement blocks and that's the reason why they gave us uh, our grades and they gave us five star so lastly you were playing with the stone is very skillful very artistic and crafty and you have you are creating a different aesthetic value with the stone which is very impressive everything which is very simple and nice looking I'm very highly impressed with your architecture. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> Sir, your efforts to conserve water in desert are appreciable. But I'm just wondering whether uh, the uh, a typical landscape architect in uh, desert, if they want to conserve the water or regenerate, probably they will go for a survey of India map and they will do ecological studies like hydrology, then geology, slope analysis, and uh, all those things. And then they come up with some sort of a solution. Here I'm just wondering why jump directly to the step well kind of a thing. Like you must have thought about it, so elaborate. That will help students and why a step well? Um, see, we are architects and frankly we are not engineers. So we did not want to create infrast only infrastructural projects. We wanted to create architectural projects. And the thing is that this is part of a private colony. Government in any case is not bothered about it. So this is part of a private colony and how to you know, make these people both value water and maintain this is to create something some architectural marvel out of it have places where people would come and sit people would go to like why uh, when you're talking of landscape why do you have to do that kind of landscaping there has to be a reason why you're doing landscaping why are you doing so much i mean up grass grow kar lein, aap peed laga dein, aapko kahan zarurat hai ki aap wahan par, uh, ki bhi jage bina and all that that's because pe when people come anything which is peopled will be maintained be sure why those were those went into dereliction old water bodies people stopped going there you bring them back aap koi purani building bhi le lenge agar wahan log nahi jayenge wo crumble hogi hi hogi so uske karan you know these becomes architectural marvels and purana social connect to aapke paas hai hai ki log jate the pani ko worship karte the maintain karte the agar yahan is colony ke andar is township ke andar agar hum isko aisa nahi banate to log jhagte bhi nahi wahan par Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Such an astonishing and magnificent uh, project. And managing the last but not the least, as always, we would like to.